What up my nerd brother, it's Jason here from Custom Cans and today I'm going to be going over some of the updated mods we've got for the HE400 SE because we've taken a bit of feedback from uh, people through the website and just tweaked the design of both of them ever so slightly. We're also offering new packages so you can get a modded up pair of HE400 SEs with the super grills and the head strap mod for 150 on the website now. Uh, then there's other options for cables and things like that on there. So there's some pretty pretty good deals that we've got going on these at the moment. But I thought I'd just do a video to show how to fit the mods, like a new updated video as we've, as we've tweaked the mods slightly. Yes, yeah, so if you're interested to see how you would fit these slightly updated mods, we'll, uh, we'll cover that in the video. We'll also take a couple of measurements on the rig to see how the sound differs when you install the super grills versus stock HE 400s. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's pretty straightforward, but I uh, thought it'd be handy to have it in a video. So if you have your set of HE 400s, I don't know if you've tried removing the grills before, but essentially you can either jam a human fingernail down in there and pull out this clip or flathead screwdriver. There's essentially four clips that are in the diagonal so rather than straight up, down, left and right, they're in the northeast, southeast kind of positions. Uh, yeah, so that's where you want to tack them. Just just bend that in slightly and the clip will come out. Then the grill will come out. It's pretty straightforward. And there is the there is the driver, all exposed. And then inside, there are wires going to the socket. And to fit this, we need to stick those out of the way. So we've used a bit of double-sided sticky tape if you're buying this kit. If you were also clever enough to buy the head strap kit, then you should be able to use some off cuts from the sticky tape from that just to stick them around the outside. But essentially, if you look at the back of the super grills, we've got some cutouts here, and that's where your cables have got to go. They've got to go inside there in order for it to all fit together. So you've got to tuck them, tuck them down around the edge if possible. Just sort of stick them in place with some double-sided tape. Or yeah, I think double-sided tape is probably best. Uh, we have used hot glue occasionally here in the workshop, but if you put too much hot glue, then uh, it doesn't, doesn't, this doesn't fit back in. So I think double-sided tape is the best way of doing it. All right, so once you've got all these stuck down out of the way, what I would recommend for safety on these metal grills, they've got a piece of metal and a piece of fabric. And if you very carefully, you should be able to separate those out and then put the fabric inside, just covering up the driver. Next you want to take your 3D printed super grill and you'll notice that they are not the same. There's a left and a right because the the socket is at the front. So you need to make sure you've got the cutout on the right side that, that covers the, the socket. And then you pop this in carefully. You might take a little, you need to get it straight on in, otherwise it won't go. But yeah, just a little bit of maneuvering and it's normally in place. And then you should get down to the clips and it should just kind of clip in and then just wobble it from side to side and you'll feel it lock into place. Yeah, because it only it'll, it'll lock in so that the blades are perfectly lined up with the driver. And then once that's in, that's it. That's all done. That's pretty straightforward. Just quickly do the other side as well. I've already taped the wires out of the way. That's the that's the fiddliest part is taping the wires out. So we'll just remove this. Pop that down there. It's literally you know a five or ten minute job. It's not it's not too difficult at all down, wibble it so it's locked in. That's all locked into place. Excellent, right, so we have the super grills in and then we'll do the head strap mod. A lot of people have found that with this headband, it presses on the top of your head and becomes a little bit uncomfortable for a while, after a while. What this does is it just goes on over the top, spreads the weight across a larger portion of the head. It's got a hole in the middle so your head doesn't get too hot and sweaty. And it also helps it conform sort of to a domey head shape rather than being flat. And these go on thusly. So the, the th main thing that we've changed with these is the sticky pads. The ones that we were using before, we tested them here. We had them on test for months. They were fine. Sent them out to customers. Most people were fine. The occasional person just had these kind of, they just slid off after a while. Like the stickiness seemed to degrade after a while. And I, I, I assumed that people had done it wrong, I don't know. And then the same thing happened to my pair. So after about six months, one side just slid off. The other side was still stuck firm. And I think it might be a heat related thing or a humidity thing, because it happened when I left them in a hot, in my summer house where it gets up to like 60 degrees centigrade. It's really hot, <laughs> enough to kill you. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the tape just seemed to kind of give up its sticky on one side. So we've 
updated it to a new type of adhesive. It's on a tissue tape. Yeah, so what we've done is we've updated the adhesive we tried for a little while with VHB tape, but it was just too tacky and difficult to stick on. It wasn't ideal and it didn't go nicely through our cutter. It kind of just fused back together. So we found this stuff the 3M9448A, which is a double coated tissue tape, so it holds together, but it's got the stickiness of the VHB tape and it works at a high temperature. So these, I think, is good up to, I can't remember, but it, plenty high enough for this kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't cut brilliantly, but what I would do is I would, you can see the semicircles that are on there, I'd hold those down. Obviously, if you're using a bit of this tape to stick down the, the thing, I'd cut off, there's a bit, there should be a spare bit kind of on there cut that off and use that to put the wires out of the way but uh, while it's on the backing I'd hold down the the center of the semicircle and then pull away the outer bit just kind of tearing it because it doesn't if it doesn't cut all the way through on our it kind of sticks back together so yeah so just remove all the excess while it's on the backing It'll make life a little bit easier uh, so here I've removed the top bit, but it's left a bit of sticky on the backing. I'm just going to pick that out of the way, Ooh, get that off as well. There we go. So then you should have some nice, neat semicircles ready to stick on. Uh, you get supplied with three, so if you mess one up, you can start again, but it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to remove that, keep it on the backing, uh, keep it on the, the front bit of paper on. And I'm going to line that up with the top of the headband, get it pretty central. So on the line up with the top of the plastic part there, get it as central as you can, stick it all down nicely, all the way around. Then peel off that part. Take your headband. Um, so there's a side that, that, that like you with like a polish on it, like a shinier side and a duller side, and it's the dull side that sticks to the to the pad. So what we do is put it in place. Bring these two little tabs round and then fold them over into a semicircle and it should match up with the with the sticky tape on there. Uh, some people have asked where you can buy replacement ones of these. We make these in-house, so if you want them exactly that shape, you have to contact us. If you've got a headband already and the sticky has started to degrade, like a couple of people have, just let us know. We'll send you out replacements. Uh, yeah, just pop us an email. We'll send you out replacement sticky pads. Okay, so now we have a more comfortable HE 400 SE that looks a bit nicer because you've got these nice leather facings over the thing. The super grills look pretty special. So yeah, it sounds nicer, looks nicer, and is more comfortable. So uh, what we will be doing package-wise... Oh, it's nice. So much nicer with the head strap. So package-wise, we'll be selling a fully modded pair like this with the super grills already installed and the head strap attached. And that will be 150 UK price. And then we'll also be selling a DIY package with 3D printed grills and the head strap for £30 for the two. If you buy it as a package, which I think is pretty good value. So £30 and you get a much more comfortable and better sounding pair of headphones. Also, if you are outside the UK, we deduct the UK taxes. So for example, if you're in the US, it ends up about 20% cheaper just because you normally don't pay import charges on something of this kind of value. And then European countries, again, we take off the UK taxes. You may have to pay tax as it comes into the country. You'll have to check your local rules and regs for that. But uh, some European countries, I think it's, it's if it's under 130 euros, it squeezes through. And this should be around that kind of money once we've deducted the taxes. So anyway, uh, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the original grill back in this. And then we'll test it on the, on the rig here. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to put it on there and then I'm going to not move it because obviously from run to run variation as you move them around on the rig you get slightly different readings so I'm going to try and just do it all uh, without without moving it off the rig let's just bust it. oh yeah one thing I forgot to mention on the super grills there's a little tiny cutout here and that's if you want to remove it for some reason the idea is that you can get a little flathead screwdriver in there and lever it up just makes it a bit easier to remove. So yeah, so if you're wondering what that little cutout there is, or you're wondering how to remove it, that's what it is. You can get a little screwdriver, it will release it. Let me interrupt you. If you find this kind of thing interesting, please do give us a thumbs up and uh, hit subscribe if you could. All really, really helps. Uh, yeah, every every new subscriber is... 
just cheers me up just a little bit. So, uh, yeah, if you fancy making someone who's been slaving away over a hot computer for months slightly happier, just give me a thumbs up. Anyway, back on with the what's it. So this is just raw data, it's not compensated or anything, it's come off the ears. It may be not super accurate or as easy to compare as some other graphs that you may be used to, but it's fine for A-B testing. You can see what changes have been made in the graphs. But um, a standard, pretty flat response, which is pretty impressive. Uh, these are very good value for money. I don't know, they're like £130 or something like that. They're really good value for money. Um, give a very nice looking response. So, stock in green here. And then what I thought I would try is just doing it without the grill, because that's a popular model that some people do. So they remove the original grill, let them breathe a bit more easily, or maybe put in a honeycomb grill over the top. Okay, so that is the so here's the graph with no grill. Overall, the graph isn't changed very much by removing the grill, but what it will do is make them sound a little bit more open. So it's not really something that will show up on a graph, but just because you can hear more of what's going on around you and there's less sound bouncing back off the grills and back in it will sound a bit more open and spacious, like your, your sound staging will be a bit, a bit better. So a basic mod, just removing the grill, a lot of people are re really like doing that, but obviously it leaves your driver exposed to getting stuff poked into it or dropped into it, which can damage them quite easily. Uh, but yeah, you don't get a huge difference in the actual graph by removing the grill. So here you've got the stock in green and the modded ones in blue. So you can see what we've done is we've given a bit more sub bass, so down around sort of 35 hertz you've now got quite a lot more and because the hump is down sort of below 40 it doesn't make the bass boomy you just get like some just gets real authority to the bass uh yeah you could just get that sub bass coming through a little bit more the mid range we've kind of smoothed off a bit so it's a little bit lower in the mid range but it's smoothed off you haven't got quite as quite as many humps and stuff it's kind of smoothed out a bit and we've if you look right at the top of the graph got uh we've reduced the dip that's around sort of 13 and a half 14k so we've brought that up so it did have quite a big dip there we've brought that up a bit uh yes yeah, so it's not a huge retune but the sub bass is what really kind of gives it that punch it feels a bit punchier and bassier and uh, but not too not boomy like you get you know if you use like an extra bass for like a bass boost it goes a bit boomy another thing i thought i'd try while we're at it is uh super grills without the little bit of mesh in there so without the protective mesh if i just get that up so without the mesh you get a tiny weeny bit more in the sub bass and you get a bit more up in the very high frequencies. So just at the top of human hearing range, you get a little bit more without that mesh. So you might get a little bit more sparkle, but then again, you're leaving your driver open to think. I have got a honeycomb mesh on the outside, so you can't drop a pen in or anything like that. But there is a potential for getting getting something in there. And yeah, you've just lost that layer of protection for a tiny weeny a little bit more. But that's, uh, that's kind of up to you. Again, removing the grill, removing the mesh, you're going to be in slightly more danger of damaging the headphones. They'll probably be fine, but I just don't want to be held responsible for that kind of thing. Obviously, with any kind of mods, there's always a chance of damaging your headphones. If you're a ham-fisted person, I'm not going to recommend doing this. The membrane on the driver is very delicate, and you can easily poke stuff through it. So yes, yeah, so it'd be incredibly cautious if you're thinking of modding them or you can send them into us we can mod them for you here so you might might have noticed also got the addition xs here which we've done a similar thing to we made super grills for them I think we've got 15 sets out to beta testers and one person reported about that they didn't really like it everyone else said they loved it and we're going to keep the mod on there so uh, you know i'm gonna you know just be honest it's not for everyone it does make these headphones a little bit brighter it improves the sound staging and just generally instrument separation all that kind of stuff we've tried to tune them to be closer to the aria organic with this but it does make them a bit brighter if you've got a bright setup like we've got quite a bright amp and dac setup here and it does make them a little bit more sibilant whereas if you've got a slightly more mellow dac and amp uh then really really nice upgrade but what might be worth hanging around for, we should be releasing these at the end of the month. We're just waiting for some more 3D printer capacity. At the moment, we've got two 3D printers. One of them has developed a fault, and we're trying to trace the problem with that. We keep fixing one thing, something else breaks, and the other printer's constantly basically printing these. So we need some more capacity. We're hoping to buy another 3D printer. We're looking to get a Bamboo Labs one, just because they seem like they're pretty reliable, and I'm fed up with printers dying on me all the time. Uh, but what might be worth interesting in subscribing, if you haven't subscribed already, you should get subscribed. But what might be worth subscribing for is, uh, oh, 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 close pack edition excess. Uh, the moment we're still, 
still working on that. Got some pretty advanced stuff in there to try and get the tuning right. The tuning is still way off. Uh, it's you know it's listen toable, but it's not right. You've you've lost quite a lot of bass by going closed back. But I've got some some ideas. It's getting closer, but yeah, closed back. It's not quite there. But hopefully, at least you'll be able to see some measurements and stuff and see what's wrong when, in the next video when we do a video about that. But yeah, I just want to say a big thank you to the people that supported us on Patreon and anyone that's bought stuff. Obviously, if you buy, if you're thinking of buying a set of these, please do try and buy them from us already modded just because uh, it helps helps keep the ball rolling here and uh, helps we can invest all the money from the stuff that we make into new products uh, you know and keep everything at a sensible-ish price um, yeah that's why we're looking to print these ourselves because if we sent these off to a, someone else to print we just couldn't sell them for a for a sensible price whereas if we print them ourselves in-house we can try and keep the cost down a little bit because we don't really charge that much for printer time so anyway <laughs> waffling on waffling on exciting times anyway uh i hope that was interesting and i will see you guys again oh we need a cheesy shot for the uh for the thing let's just do that Ooh. Ooh. i don't know it's difficult to tell does this look good does this look good for a thumbnail i don't know look at the thing thumbnail Blah, 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 blah.